was not only one of the best defenders, but he was one of the most feared. I mean, he was like Superman. He made rebounding and defense sexy. <laughs> and he impacted the game a lot bigger. There's Dennis again. He doesn't even have to score a basket to turn a game around with his rebounding ability. Dennis Rodman, a.k.a. The Worm, will be a game changer in today's NBA. His relentless energy, tenacity, and ability to dominate without needing the ball in his hands will make him a unique force in the modern game. In an era where positionless basketball is key and players are expected to contribute in multiple ways, Rodman's versatility on defense, guarding anyone from point guards to sensors, will be a perfect fit. His rebounding, which was already legendary, will stand out even more in today's pace and space style of play, where securing extra possessions is crucial. Imagine him grabbing boards over seven footers, then sprinting down the court to disrupt the opposing team's offense, constantly making high energy and game-changing plays. But it's not just his on-court skills that will captivate fans. Rodman's personality, his flair, his unpredictability, and larger-than-life character will make him a social media superstar. In an age where every moment is instantly shared and dissected online, Rodman's wild outfits, eccentric behavior, and outspoken attitude will draw attention both on and off the court. He'll be the topic of conversation every night, whether it's for pulling down 20 rebounds in a game or his latest headline grabbing stunt. Rodman's grit, toughness, and willingness to do the dirty work will set him apart in today's NBA, where many players prioritize flashy offensive stats. So here are a collection of NBA legends and players explaining why Dennis Rodman will be a problem in today's NBA. Enjoy the video, man. Shaq, Kobe, and Dennis on the same team. Who's the biggest superstar? You. No. Kobe? Dennis, Dennis Rodman. I know that. I mean, I heard all the stories. Bro. Yeah, I thought you was talking about just superstar. You told me some stories now. This dude will come in. The meeting's at, at 5.30. Like, you got to be there at 5.30, 45 minutes ago. He'll come in with 40 minutes on the clock, eating chicken and rice, not paying attention. Doing it in the middle of the meeting, take a cold shower, not paying attention. We go out first, then he'll come out, give you 25 rebounds, stinking like a Put his clothes on. And go to the club and had the baddest woman I've ever seen in my life. He was bad, man. He was, Dennis was a machine. Uh, in Detroit, he was a machine, man. He could guard anybody on the floor. Uh, he had the psychological games. He'd get in your head, like, you know, before the game, you give a dap. He squeezed my ass a little too. <laughs> it wasn't like, what's up? It wasn't like, let's go. It was, I was. So now you're thinking. <laughs> you know, like, Y'all really want to play this? <laughs> you're like, you running down the court, you know, thinking about this motherfucker. Why he getting every fucking offensive rebound there is? Because he knew how to, you know, get physical and play, you know, and fly. I mean, he was, but his foot speed matched mine. So all my little quick shit was, so you had to be ready. But I was ready. I was ready, but mm -hmm. but yeah, Dennis was uh, Dennis was he was a beast, man. So early on, Dennis Rodman, uh, with no hand check and with hand check, had the agility to move with any point guard in the '90s. I'm talking Isaiah, I'm talking Dumars, I'm talking your favorite guard, I'm talking Mark Price, John Magic. Stockton. He had the agility, meaning that if we want to do the hammer, y'all remember the hammer, hammer, go, go, go. <laughs> and you slide and you go left, put him in the mix. Y'all remember that? Oh, man. He could slide left to right laterally with anybody. Anybody. He was 6'9 and had the movement of a point guard. So defensively, he didn't give a fuck about a switch. And he long. And guess what at the end? He was physical at the end of whatever he did. So if it was a rebound, it was a post out, he would go get the rebound. If he had to contest, he would contest. He played like a, a Draymond, but more in control. And he wasn't as dirty, I'm not gonna say, you know what I'm saying? But he had tactics where he wouldn't use his elbow, he'd use his body. You know, he would run into you and take the rebound. He would outwork you. I followed Dennis' career, and I think he was one of the guys that kind of helped motivate me coming from a small school and knowing that I could make it to the NBA. Uh, he came out of Southeast Oklahoma, great rebounder, and I followed him and realized then that I had an opportunity to play at the next level just because of his hard work and his hunger and his journey that, that he had been through. I, this guy really fitted in with the bad boys is because he was a winner. He was a leader, and his basketball IQ is off the charts. And I had an opportunity to experience that playing alongside him, 
Um, everyone knows that you know he was you know a part of a great team, but they didn't realize how great a rebounder Dennis was when he was with the Bad Boys. Right. You I know, didn't know I didn't know either. And, <laughs> you know, so a, a lot of his individual me. skills never really stood out, but you know when he was able to come and join us with the Chicago Bulls. Uh, we not only got the greatest rebound of all time, but we got a basketball player that had a very high basketball IQ, and he knew how to win. It, yeah. it wasn't about just uh, the leaders in Detroit, but they had a great piece here, a guy that was hungry and wanted to be known at the end of the day, as we know now. Best game I've ever seen Dennis Robin played, I had one of the best seats in the house because it was against my beloved Indiana Pacers. March 4th, 1992, we're an upstart young Indiana Pacers team. They were still the bad boys of the Central Division and of the Eastern Conference and champions and so forth. In Detroit, here we are trying to make a name for ourselves. And it was a pretty good game, but Dennis Rodman put on an absolute rebounding clinic. Top of the key, no, rebound Rodman. Great pass by Worm. Again, Rodman keeping it alive. How many times does he get his hands on the basketball? His career high, 34 rebounds. 18 of them at the offensive end. We went down in overtime to the Pistons, but it was an unbelievable rebounding performance by the Worm, the great one, Dennis Rodman. I tell you, that Dennis Rodman is a one-man record crew. Phil, now, his whole motive is to get Dennis back in shape. Everybody starts running in a line, and Phil blows a whistle. Whoever's at the back, run to the front. Now, you can't stop. Whoever's in front controls the pace. So I tell everybody in that group, say, look, whoever gets in the front of that row, slow down to a fucking walk. We're just going to jog and jog and jog and jog. Dennis takes off. Boom. Now, he blows a whistle. Now, we cannot stop until we get back in front of Dennis. It took us four laps to catch up to that. Warren was like, could he play? Not only could he play in this league, but he would have been in problem because you had to be physical. Yeah, that's an engine. That's, six, seven, Man, that's an engine, bro. Yeah. That's an engine. That's an engine. You and gotta... niggas didn't want to play against him either. <laughs> Dennis Rodman? Worm. I think the worm just doesn't get a lot of credit for how smart he was, how good his basketball IQ was. You know, he did all the dirty work, you know, dove on the ground you know, took charges, got into people's heads, you know, frustrated them. But the worm had a very, very good IQ. And a lot of people really didn't know that about him. They just thought he was just a crazy man running around with, you know, all kind of colors in his head. But it was a reason why he fit in with Chicago was because of his IQ. Dennis Rodman didn't care about scoring the ball. You know, Dennis Rodman can go zero points, but 15 rebounds, uh, he take two charges, may get four or five assists, he impacted the game where it's not really in the stat sheets other than the rebound. And he's now your teammate. Yeah. And this yeah. is a unique cat. Yeah. I mean, he yeah, is. That's, that's an understatement right there, yeah. How did uh, oil and water mix? Yeah. I, you know what? And I love Dennis. I really do. He's an unbelievable player. Incredibly athletic. He, I mean, he was like Superman. You know, like, he just you know just a freak of nature a guy could run all day long never got tired and was like the energizer bunny um i mean i you know i loved having him next to me on the court because you always felt like you, you know you just got a warrior with you so on the court he's a great guy to have next to you uh in the locker room there's a little different story but you know the main thing i used to marvel how he would stand straight up he showed no tendencies of butt that you know the basics of defense and how you do it the guy could run all day he can run all day, man, in the game. He never got tired. That's why you saw him diving in the stands all over the floor. That effort. Come on. Rodman embarrassing the Knicks now off the glass. He was in after the game. He used to ride the stationary bike. Bro, we played these motherfuckers. He played 43 minutes, dog. I think he ended up getting kicked out because he kicked the cameraman and shit. I go in the back, Joe. I'm tired as shit. Man, Lord on the motherfucking treadmill and combat boots up to his goddamn what? knees, running on a 15 incline. 
at a 15, 17, like talking Damn. to him. Yeah, big fella got big, got big fella in tomorrow in Jersey. Got a, you know what I'm saying? He don't, he, he don't know what he's doing with. It. Damn, where what you know? Just working out, you know what I'm saying? You after games, you got he talking to me while he's <laughs> I'm like, bro, this nigga's a fucking engine. I looked at him like on some mystique, bro. You really cannot talk about the NBA from a historical perspective without talking about Dennis Rodman. Because in my opinion, that's how much of an impact that he made, which is rare for someone with his notoriety that don't have no interest in scoring the basketball. And that's normally where you get most of your glory from is offensively. But he took pride on the defensive end. And that's six foot eight. I think he led the league in rebounding seven consecutive years and a heck of a defensive player also. There's no place to throw it. You know, in college, I used to always go up to the Pistons and work out with them and watch him. You know, it was, this was before he turned into Dennis Rodman with the Tats. But the thing that amazed me as a young player was watching a guy go through his practices or sometimes after the game. And I go in the locker room with John, Sally, and Joe and Isaiah talk. And he'd be on a treadmill or he'd be on a Stairmaster. And they say he would do an hour after a game. You know, so for me to see a guy that just played a game and his, his, his ability to go get on the Stairmaster for another hour, and then also playing against him. I never had a guy that I didn't think I could go around at 6'8", standing straight up, and laterally he could still slide his feet and draw a charge. To me, that was unbelievable. You know, he, he wasn't the most skilled guy, but when you talk about the greatest athletes to ever play in the NBA, I think Dennis Rodman is in that category. When you think about the stamina, what you talked about, Charles, just the way he lived his life, and to be able to, to play with that kind of energy night after night, the way he could run, especially early when he was with the Pistons mm -hmm. and he would chase people down and guard every position. That guy could have been a world-class triple jumper or 400-meter sprinter. I mean, he was Tight saying, oh, incredible. <laughs> and, and Shaq, this is a guy, too, who, I mean, you played with him a little bit in L.A., but playing against him, wasn't he? He's one of those irritating, get-under-your-skin kind of guys, right? Is he a, would it be fair to say, yeah, love, love having him on my team for what he does, but when you're playing against him, I'd yeah, rather not? Was, he was a great defender. He always moved his feet. Uh, the great thing about Dennis Rodman is he always did it his way. When I played with him, like, you know, he's supposed to be there an hour and a half before the game. He would come in with 45 on the, on the clock, eating chicken and rice. <laughs> and nobody would say anything because we knew that he was going to give us 20 to 25 rebounds at the game. And so, you know, he did it his way. He rode the treadmill after the game. And, you know, Steve was right. He was a phenomenal athlete. Phenomenal. They, you, know, they, you know, Ernie, I, I saw that irritating problem. So Michael used to joke to me all the time. What I would do is, i just punch him as hard as I could at the beginning of the game, <laughs> and he would leave you alone. Yeah, you sure would. He would. You just had, because Michael used to, Charles, why you keep doing that? I said, dude, he stopped, because he stops ir irritating you and bugging you once you clock him. I would just punch him as hard as I could, like in the first <laughs> five minutes of the game. <laughs> I, he gave me my first job, Country Day. He used to go play video games. When I was in high school, he'd be up there playing video games with kids in the, in the, uh, arcade, you remember this? And I, so he gave me my first job. I go up. He's like, "You want to come up and camp?" I'm like, "Yeah, thank you, Mr. Robin." You know, I go up there. He pays me. He's working with all the kids, and then he plays with us for three hours after. Just plays with us. He wasn't shooting all that, running and doing all that, but he played with us, and he didn't have to. It was other Pistons, other people there, and you know, seeing his work at the Dennis Rodman, the way he rebounded the basketball, and the way he played, he made rebounding in defense sexy, <laughs> you know? And, and not only did he make it sexy, he also figured out how to get paid for just rebounding and playing defense. And, and again, in our era, you didn't get paid for rebounding. And, and I remember, you know, we, we in a layup line and, and I was on him about, hey man, you know, you gotta get loose. You gotta, you know, get some layups. And he, he's like, no, I, I, I wanna watch, you know, the rotation of the ball, how many times guys, you know, they, he was counting the rotation, like Joe's ball, like, you know, spins like three times in the air. You know, this guy spins like two. And, and I, I had never heard anyone talk about rebounding in such a scientific way. Dennis took the responsibility of guarding the other team's top score all the time, regardless of who he was. This is Jordan at one and one now. Rodman won't give an inch. He is truly the only person I've ever known that could guard all five positions. And I don't mean just 
guard him a little bit, clamp down and shut down. In addition to his seven all-defensive first-team selections, Rodman also won seven straight rebounding titles, averaging a staggering 16.7 boards over that span. Quite a feat for a player not much bigger than a shooting guard. Most people think he's 6'9", 260. And Dennis was a, maybe a half an inch taller than me, a 6'6", 220. And he impacted the game a lot bigger. There's Dennis again. He doesn't even have to score a basket to turn a game around with his rebounding ability. You got to throw him in the category of some of the greats, like Bill Russell. Rebound, Rodman. He's unbelievable at that. Best in the league. Like a Will Chamberlain. Rodman's tap is rebound number 34. Because he used to dominate the game just on rebounds alone. Oh, the dandy rebound from Dennis Rodman. That's one of the greatest defensive players to ever play this game. That's a fierce competitor. Dennis wasn't much of a talker as, as much as he was like a pest. Would get, try to get in your head and do stuff to try to get you out of your game. That was his strong suit. I came in in 96, 97, 98. I'm right during that championship run and, and played against them. And obviously we know how great the Bulls were and how dominant they were. And you understood why. Dennis Rodman is the best rebounder um, that I ever went against, the strongest guy I ever went against. Um, a guy who was virtually impossible for me to post up, um, just too strong. And I played against Dennis Rodman in the era where you can hand check. And that's the worst to be because that's where he's at his best because he's able to use his body and hand check and control. Whenever we went on the floor and we were in deep championship playoff series, this guy would be in his own world about winning, just about, you just saw it dripping off of him. You just saw on his face the passion he had for the game. I wanted this one so bad. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and tell me what was your favorite Dennis Rodman story? I know it's a lot. So make sure you like, share, subscribe, and until next time.